Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Are you ready for the story, my son? Yes, I am. I'm waiting to know what happened to Talat. All right, my son. The story I'm going to tell you today is not about Talat. It's about another prophet named Dawood alayhi salam. Who was he, Baba? Hmm. I will tell you now. Do you remember where we stopped yesterday? Yes. You told me how Talat and his army faced the army of Philistines. And do you remember who was the leader of Philistine army? Hmm. It was Goliath, a gigantic man. Masha Allah, that was wonderful. Now listen carefully. The story of Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. In the previous episode, we saw how Talut took a small army to face the Philistines. Many of Talut's men ran away when they saw the huge army of the Philistines. Goliath, the leader of the Philistine army, was a man of huge build and brute strength. When the two armies faced each other, Goliath challenged Talut to send anyone from their army for a single combat. It was a custom in those days where a soldier from each side would fight with each other instead of the whole army. Who is willing to fight for our side? Talut asked his men, but they were scared and no one had enough courage to volunteer. I will marry my daughter to the man who would fight Goliath, offered Talut. But the soldiers remained silent and no one volunteered. Talut was upset. He realized that his soldiers were too scared to fight Goliath. It was then that a small and young youth stepped forward from the group. I am ready to fight Goliath, said the young man. When the soldiers saw him, they laughed at him. The young man was none other than Dawood alayhi salam from the city of Bethlehem. His brothers were soldiers in the army and he was the youngest son in his family. His father had sent him to the battlefield to keep him updated on the news at the war front. Dawood was given clear instructions by his father to not take part in the fighting. Although Talut was very impressed by the youth's courage, he said, I admire your courage, but you are no match for the mighty warrior. Let the mighty men come forward. But Dawood alayhi salam, however, had already decided and he was ready to fight Goliath. He shouted to the king, I killed a lion who disturbed my father's sleep yesterday. I had also killed a bear not long ago all by myself. Please do not judge me by my appearance. Talut was surprised by the young man's braveness. My brave soldier, he said, if you are willing to fight, then may Allah guard you and grant you strength. The king asked his men to dress the young prophet in battle armor and to give him a sword. But Dawood was not used to wearing battle dress. He did not feel comfortable in it at all. It also obstructed his movements. The soldiers around were quite surprised when he asked them to remove his armor. He started collecting a few pebbles and filled his leather pouch with him. He then slung it over his shoulder next to his sling. Talut was worried by now. How are you going to defend yourself with just a sling and few stones? He asked him. Allah who protected me from the claws of the bear and the fangs of the lion will certainly protect me from this brute, replied the prophet. With his wooden staff in his hand, he began to walk towards the enemy. A roar of laughter echoed from the enemy's side when they saw him. When Goliath saw the lean man he was about to fight, he laughed loudly and roared, Ha ha, you out here to play, or are you tired of your life? I can easily cut off your head with one swipe of my sword. You may have armor. Shield and the sword, but I face you in the name of Allah, our Lord, whose laws you have mocked. Saying this, he took his sling and placed a pebble in it. He swung the sling and aimed at Goliath. The pebble shot. 
from the whirling sling with the speed of an arrow and hit Goliath's head with great force. Blood gushed from his forehead. The giant thumped to the ground, lifeless even before he had a chance to draw his sword. The Philistine army were dumbstruck when they saw what happened. When they realized that their leader was killed, they took off to their heels and ran for their lives. Neither could Talut and the soldiers believe what happened. They had just won the war. Years of suffering at the hands of Philistines had come to an end. <laughs> the men were overjoyed and carried the Prophet back to their country. Dawood had become a hero overnight. Talut kept his word and married his daughter Miqil to the young warrior. He appointed Dawood as one of his chief advisors. Dawood had now become the most famous man in Israel. The sudden fame never got into his head. He was not a prisoner of fame, but a prisoner of Allah's love. Therefore, after his victory, he did not go to any palace to celebrate his success, but went out into the desert to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet had such a beautiful voice that when he sang praises, the birds, the plants, and even the mountains joined him to glorify Allah. Allah had chosen Dawood to be a prophet and revealed the Psalms to him. When Dawood recited the scriptures, the mountains joined him and the birds danced around him. And it was not just that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had also blessed Dawood with the ability to understand the languages of animals and birds. The young prophet had the habit of fasting every alternate day and during the night he used to sleep for the first half of the night and pray for some time and again go back to sleep. Such was his devotion to Allah. There were many wars during that time and the prophet was able to win every one of them for the people of Israel, the people praised and loved Dawood It was during this time that Talut started getting jealous of the Prophet. He despised the fact that people praised the young man more than him. He sensed something strange in the king's attitude towards him. He asked his wife what was bothering her father. His wife started to weep and said, Oh Dawood, I will never keep any secrets from you. My father is jealous of your popularity. He fears that he would lose his kingdom to you. The prophet was shocked to hear this. Then the wife told him that Talut was planning something evil and she asked her husband to be on guard. The next day Talut summoned the prophet to his palace. Canaan has gathered their army, he said and they are marching towards our kingdom. You must take your army and fight them. Do not return unless you are victorious. The prophet sensed that this was an excuse to get rid of him. Yes, I will take my army and fight them, he replied. He knew that Ganon's army was big and strong, but even then he agreed to fight them. Dawood <laughs> fought the Canaanites bravely. After a fierce battle that lasted for many days, Allah granted them victory. Talut had indeed hoped for Dawood to get killed in the battle. He never expected the Prophet to defeat such a large army. When he saw the Prophet being adulated by the Israelites, his fear increased. Talut called one of his trusted soldiers and they made a plot to kill him that night itself. But Miqil overheard their plans and she was terrified. She ran to her husband and asked him to escape immediately. The Prophet gathered his belongings, packed some food and set off on a camel. You see, when Talut became jealous of the Prophet, he didn't even bother to think about the well-being of his daughter. Mashallah. 
that was such a wonderful story. I really like the part where the prophet killed Goliath with just a pebble. <laughs> now, are you ready for the questions? Yes. All right, now tell me the name of the leader of the Philistine army. I just told you that. His name was Goliath. Now tell me how Dawood killed Goliath. The prophet killed him by a slingshot. Talith offered to marry his daughter to whoever fought Goliath. Her name was Miquil. That's right again. Why was Talut worried when the Prophet started winning the battles? Hmm. Talut thought that the Prophet might snatch the kingdom away from him. This made him jealous. MashaAllah, you gave me all the right answers, my son. It's time for me to leave. I will tell you the remaining story tomorrow. Good night, Baba. Good night, my son. 